Okay, this is the MDC 2 modules 1 through 4 exam review. So cancer development, the principles, carcinogenesis and oncogenesis equals cancer development. Cancer regulation, the genetic and physiologic processes that control cellular growth, replication, differentiation, and function to maintain homeostasis. Features of the cell, anaplasia, large nucleus to cytoplasm ratio, specific functions lost, loose adherence, migration, this is metastasis, no contract inhibition, rapid or continuous cell division, and abnormal chromosome, this is aneuploidy. Characteristics of normal cells, benign and cancer cells. So normal cells are non-migratory, they're orderly, well-regulated growth, tight adherence, mitosis, apoptosis, and normal number of chromosomes. This is euploidy. Benign, this doesn't require intervention. This is moles, skin tags, endometriosis. Same features as normal cells with regulated growth. Malignant indicates cancer. It's distorted morphology. Cytoplasm reversed, not differentiated, not regulated, and doesn't die. Cancer cells are abnormal, harmful to normal body tissues, anaplasia, this is opposite, large nuclear to cytoplasmic ratio, specific functions are lost, rapid or continuous cell division, migration, <clears throat> this is metastasis, major cause of death, and aneuploidy, this is abnormal chromosomes. There's two tumor types, primary and secondary. Primary is identified by the tissue from which it arose. This is the parent tissue. Secondary is metastatic. Its cancer cells move from primary location to additional tumors. All right, so the phases. There's initiation, promotion, progression, and metastasis. So initiation is caused by anything that can damage cellular DNA. It's reversible. Promotion is enhanced growth of an initiated cell by substance known as promoters. These are hormones and proteins. Progression, continued change of sick cancer cells of malignancies making it more malignant over time. And metastasis, this is cancer cells moved from primary location by breaking off and traveling to new tumors. Metastasis is malignant transformation, tumor vascularization, blood vessel penetration, arrest, and invasion. Tumor staging and grading. Grading is classify the cellular aspects of tumor. The higher the grade, the more malignant. Ploidy is classify chromosomes as normal or abnormal. Staging is clinical aspects with location and metastasis, TNM. You need to know the table. And doubling time is amount of time it takes a tumor to increase in size. And meiotic time is percentage of actively dividing cells with a tumor. So for tumor size, it goes T1, which is zero to two centimeters, all the way to T4, where the tumor has broken through the skin or attached to a chest wall. N is lymph node status. This goes N0. This is where the surgeon can't feel any nodes all the way to N3, where that's a swollen nodes located near collarbone. And M is metastasis, M0 is tested nodes are cancer free, and M1 is tested nodes shows cancer or micro metastasis. All right, so etiology of cancer. The incidence is oncogene activation. Risk factors are genetic and environmental. The chemical carcinogenesis is tobacco use. Physical carcinogenesis is radiation, chronic irritation, for example, a pap smear. Vir viral carcinogenesis is oncoviruses. This is HPV, hepatitis, and AIDS. Um, immunity, age, older adults, genetic risk is BRCA1 and 2 breast cancer genes. All right, the seven warning signs are caution. C, changes in bowel or bladder habits. A, a sore that doesn't heal. U, unusual bleeding or discharge. T, thickening or lump in the breast or elsewhere. I, ingestion 
or difficulty swallowing or indigestion or difficulty swallowing. O, obvious change in wart or mole and N, nagging cough or hoarsenessness. All right, the impact of cancer on physical function. Priority, impaired immunity and clotting. This is the bone marrow. Altered GI function. It increases metabolism, decreased appetite, decreased ability to absorb nutrients, and cachexia. Altered peripheral nerve function caused by chemotherapy and motor and sensory deficits. Cancer pain is multimodal method of treatment and altered respiratory and cardiac function. Cancer prevention. So there's primary and secondary. Primary is a goal to stop cancer from ever occurring. This is eating a low-fat diet, removal of at-risk tissue, vaccination, which is HPV and double mastectomy. Secondary is trying to catch it early. This is uh, screenings and self-examination. So for example, which of the following does the nurse recognize as a primary cancer prevention strategy? The answer is removal of mole on the shoulder. Next is a nurse is assessing a patient with a genetic history of cancer. Which nursing assessment finding is most concerning? This is a nagging cough with hoarsenessness. And the next one is a nurse understands that normal cells and benign cells share which characteristics? And this is no migration, orderly growth, tight adherence, and specific morphology. All right, so cancer management. The goal is cure, control, and comfort. Localized is surgery and radiation, and systemic is chemotherapy, immunotherapy, and hormonal therapy. Treatments are surgery, radiation, and chemo. Okay, so we're going to give you an information on each one. So surgery is the oldest form of cancer treatment. Prophylaxis is the primary prevention. This is preventing cancer from ever recurring, like a double mastectomy. The diagnosis, you do a biopsy. Curative is a lumpectomy. Debulking or palliation is comfort measures and reconstruction. Radiation. The purpose is to destroy cells with minimal damage of surrounding normal cells. It's a localized treatment. The exposure is amount of radiation delivered. The grays are the units. <clears throat> And then radiation dose, amount of radiation ab absorbed. This is the lifetime dose. <clears throat> educate and increase risk of fractures. So educate the patient not to remove temporary ink markings for subsequent treatments. All right, so the side effects of radiation. It is acute and long-term, site-specific changes where the radiation was given. For example, the brain, it would be cerebral edema, alopecia, which is hair loss, and then if you did the intestines, diarrhea, GI symptoms. Local skin changes and hair loss, alopecia, burns, changes in color in that area, bone marrow suppression, it's a priority, which is reduced immunity, anemia, increased risk of infection, and increased risk of bleeding. Also, zero stomina, sormina, zero stomina, which is dry mouth. And then we have chemo. This is a treatment of cancer with chemical agents. The goal is cure and increase survival time, kill cancer cells. You're going to kill by damaging DNA, by disrupting <clears throat> Adjuvant therapy is treatment after surgery and cytotoxic event effects is death to the cells. Cells are exerted on healthy cells and cancer cells. Treatment issues. So we have extravasion. The drug is, is leaking to surrounding tissues due to IV infiltration. It's um, the most important intervention is prevention. And you need to slow, go slow to check for blood return. All right, vesicants is a chemical that changes tissue on direct contact. The side effects are a priority. This is neutropenia, precaution, always wear PPE, including a mask around the patient. Limit visitors, always have ded dedicated equipment in the room, wash your hands, no fresh fruit or flowers, stay away from crowd crowded areas, they're at a high risk for infection. Also thrombocytopenia, these are low platelets, bone marrow suppression, impaired clotting, the most serious risk, 
Assess skin for bruising, petechiae, electric razors for shaving, and keep lips moist. All right, so side effects, interventions. So anemia, administer epoetin, alpha, subcutaneously once a week. Chemo is killing off the red blood cells faster than the body can make, so give growth factor to stimulate the body to make red blood, more red blood cells to offset what is being lost. Neutropenia. Inspect the IV sites every four hours for signs of infection. Normal is 150 to 400. If they're low, minimize injections. Use port for draws unless blood culture. But if worried about sepsis, the blood draw trumps risk of infection. Thrombocytopenia. Avoid intramuscular injections and venipunctures. It's the normal inspect of IV sites. To inspect them, I inspect the IV sites. Mucoso, si, muco, s, mucositis. This is the mouth. Mucositis. Sorry. Cryotherapy. These are ice chips and water. No mouthwash with alcohol. Avoid brushing teeth and tongue and avoid hot liquids. If you're going to brush your teeth, use a soft bristle. All right. So, oncological emergencies. S I A D H. <coughs> This is too much ADH. It dilutes the blood sodium levels and weight gain. Spinal cord compression. This requires immediate intervention. Tumor compresses spinal cord. Back pain. Treatment is corticosteroids. Superior vena cava syndrome. Edema in the face around the eyes. Periorbital. The, pri the priority treatment is high dose radiation. Hypercalcemia is muscle weakness, lethargy, and loss of appetite. Tumor lysis syndrome is hydration. Hypo hyperkalemia is a priority. All right, so some questions. What is the expected outcome related to hair loss for a patient who is undergoing chemotherapy? The answer is hair, hair regrowth usually begins about one month after completion of chemotherapy. A patient who is receiving radiation therapy for breast cancer is most likely to experience which side effect? Fatigue. When is the patient with acute leukemia at greatest risk for developing tumor lysis syndrome? After the first cycle of chemotherapy. All right, so hospice care. This is a quality model, compassionate care for those facing life-limiting illness or injury. It's less than six months to live. The purpose or goal is comfort care only. The services are patients have a prognosis of six months or less to live. Care is provided when curative treatment such as chemotherapy has been stopped. Care is provided in 60 and 90 day periods with an opportunity to continue if eligibility criteria is met. Ongoing care is provided by the RN. Palliative care. This is the philosophy of care for those with life-threatening disease. And this care is provided by um, the physician, nurse practitioner, or the team. They're always involved in hospice. The purpose or the goal is high quality symptom management. The services are patients can be in any stage of a serious illness. A consultation is provided that is a concurrent with curative therapies or therapies that prolong life. Care is not limited by specific time periods. Care is in the form of a consultation visit by a primary health care provider who makes re recommendations and follow-up cares may be given. Grief is an emotional feeling related to the perception of loss. Mourning is an outward social expression of the loss. Interventions are based on cultural beliefs, values, and practices. Okay, so the nurse is caring for a patient who has a terminal condition but is expected to live several years. For which type of care will the nurse advocate? This is palliative care. The hospice nurse is caring for a patient who is actively dying. When the patient's respirations become loud and wet, the caregiver expresses fear that the patient is in respiratory distress. What is their appropriate nursing action? Okay, so it's reposition the patient onto one side administer an anticholinergic drug as ordered, and provide the caregiver with reassurance that this is a normal finding in someone who is actively dying. 
Okay, a competent patient who has been given three months to live expresses the desire to voluntarily stop eating and drinking, which is the appropriate nursing response. This is advocate for the, the patient's choice. Okay, so the role of fluid and electrolytes, passive versus active transport. So passive does not require energy. It moves from higher to lower concentration. Active moves from lower concentration to higher, and it requires ATP. Diffusion is solutes move from higher to lower concentration. Active transport is where solids move from lower to higher concentration. Osmosis is fluid moves across a membrane from an area of low solute concentration to an area of high solute concentration. Dehydration is due to excessive diaphoresis, vomiting, diarrhea, and burns. The main goal is fluids to maintain perfusion. Normal fluid and electrolytes. The volume. Sodium is 135 to 145. It's extracellular and neuro. Potassium is 3.5 to 5. It's intracellular and cardiac. Never give intramuscular or push potassium. Only give orally or IV and always have a patient on an EKG monitor. Calcium is 9.0 to 10.5 and that's the parathyroid hormone. Magnesium is 1.8 to 2.5. Hypervolemia is due to CHF and re renal failure. Hypovolemia is dehydration, fluid volume deficit. Hypernatremia is diabetes and civitus. You give 0 0.45 saline instead of 0 0.9 and dehydration. Hyponatremia is SIADH and also hypervolemia. Hyperkalemia is kidney failure, tumor lysis syndrome. This caused dangerous and severe hyperkalemia. Crush injury and currents can damage the cell to cause hyperkalemia. Hypercalcemia is hyperparathyroidism. Hypocalcemia is hypoparathyroidism. Chovex-Steck sign, which is cheek twitch, tetany and muscle cramps. Trousseau sign is blood pressure. If you're stuck on a question, always choose kidney failure for electrolyte disorders. The goal is to maintain adequate perfusion. Okay, so I got some questions. A tumor with stage T4, N3, M0, what does this mean? The tumor is large, has not metastasized, and has much node involvement. 